What's going on? Brand new day. I haven't moved much in the market, bounced down a little bit. A little bit late, but we're gonna keep on schedule. So, this one's probably only gonna be about an hour and a half long. But, uh, I just got caught up watching uh, Atlanta with some friends. Uh, season four of Atlanta just came out today, I believe. They released two episodes. It's a, it's a great show, if you guys haven't seen it. Definitely not for everybody, but let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, here, let me try to fix this real quick, because I think the camera might be a little bit too bright. There we go, that's better. I got my window curtains open today. Trying to get some bright light in my eyeballs. Let me turn some, some mood lighting on. Feeling, feeling green. I just have my lights on like a warm light setting. I hate how hue, like, they make it so difficult just to have one singular color. It's all different color schemes that are named like Blood Moon, Moonlight, Nebula, Glitter and Glam. They have a light setting named Promise. And it just shows a wedding ring. Emerald Flutter. I guess we'll do that one. It's like a, it's like a blue. All right, let's go ahead and hop into it. Nothing a whole lot to talk about. We're still in the same exact long on BTC. ETH is still struggling to get back about its 1421 goal. Like it, it, it would make sense for ETH to push a little bit down lower, like I've been talking about. But like I said, I don't. Just because BTC and ETH move together, I just don't want BTC to put in that lower low. If it does, it does. It wouldn't hurt us because we have that other entry point at 1757 or 17,577. Even if we came back down and touched the macro support here at 16,252. We just came down, touched that real quick. We came back up and got back above this setup. Go ahead and open up buy a bit real quick. Oh, my setup is all janky today. Let me increase brightness on this monitor because I cannot see the chat. JK, what's going on? Hey, Katie. Hello. This song is fire. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's like background music. Glad you like it though. He has like different types of music. I went with like the, you know, like the cyberpunk feel. I'll try it. He has a whole bunch of stuff on here. That's uh copyright free, so I'll try it all out. Didn't know season four was out. Me either. I just saw like I was watching like in my spare time. I just watch YouTube videos that talk about, you know, like different movies and shows and like uh, how well they do stuff. Or I'll, you know, YouTube videos on She-Hulk and how not well it does stuff. 
and they were talking about Atlanta. So I was like, I'm going to go rewatch Atlanta. Turns out they came out with a new season today. It's serendipity. But count's sitting at 1740 right now. Don't love to see it, but it is what it is. That music made me bust into a windmill and get my head spin on. <laughs> Anton, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I uh, had some spicy noodles before I got on today. I feel like I'm wrecking my body with uh, these spicy noodles I've been eating. I don't know if you guys ever tried Nong Shim, but I've known about them for like a year, but I just stuck to the tried and true like top ramen and nisen or nisen but uh i feel like i give it a shot since uh a lot of the stores around me started carrying them and uh they're super like they're super good it's just uh you have to deal with a runny nose while you eat them how much for a shirtless stream dude 10 grand you think I want to get my man titties out here? Dude, I you, I need I need a payday if you want to see my man titties, my moves. Uh, why do I feel like the market is going to go crazy in the last quarter? Uh, hopefully we get something. And hopefully we're on the correct side of it. We need another, uh, another short like we had up here. That was a monster. That's what I'm trying to plan on, man. I'm, I'm holding these longs regardless of what happens seeing if we get the market to move in the right way how's fish he be chilling getting hair all over the white blanket making it look like him hey guys paid it tomorrow fantastic man <laughs> done and done water emojis yikes let's check out the US 100 US 100 did come back down below uh well it's like kind of like sitting around it right now that's got a little tiny abc going on on the smaller time frames nothing that i would take too seriously but hopefully it does propel us back above At the moment it does look like it's going to use that as resistance and we form a larger ABC coming down, retest on that level. Spy. Spy needs to come back up a little bit more. Looks like it's retesting that low right now. Which is good to see. I mean, like you're seeing right now on the spy you have this big uptrend into this downtrend we now have a nice abc structure here so to me looking like it wants to go ahead and try to put in a c and hopefully it's not a rejection and this turns into a gigantic b wave hopefully at that point yeah we probably will see something come back down but hopefully it's an abc retest and it starts to build a larger structure. Next support, if this level breaks, uh, 16,577. Uh, 16,200. That's what I'll be looking at next for uh, some support. I probably won't be taking any trades down there, but if we do come back above 17,577, that's when I'll be looking to get back into a long. And we'll definitely have a little bit more market momentum if it is retracing back up that way. If the gov government, <laughs> government, uh, bans proof of work and declares proof of, work of stake projects as unregistered securities. What happens to HBAR? Uh, I really don't know too much about HBAR, but uh, which is neither proof of work or stake. 
don't know about that. And it's... It's like, what government... So say the U.S. bans proof of work. Okay, well then some other country is good. It's, it's just not in the best interest. So it's like when China banned Bitcoin mining, which they don't enforce, by the way. They definitely don't. A lot of villages in China are pretty much purely profiting off of Bitcoin mining. So say the U.S. government bans it. Some other country is just going to use it as an opportunity to scoop up all that hash power that is now available. So, I mean, there's no incentive for a government to do so, in my opinion. Kite hype, you the man, bro. I'm the boy. I'm the boy. How's the S&P looking? Then we are just take a look at this. No, we didn't. Well, it seems like it's in the same situation as the US 100 and the SPY. Like I said, in terms of like the, st the structure I see, we have the large A, the large B, and the large C. So to me, this level kind of marked the end of this trend. And we're coming back down to retest it to confirm if the market actually is stable. Obviously, this, this is one of the most important points right now. If this level fails, obviously, we're going to continue down lower. But this is a proof for the market to say, hey... We've stabilized. This downturn has done. So you better hope. And then overall, just like the S&P, I mean, the SPY, the S100. To me, this looks like the first uptrend, B wave, C wave. And hopefully we get continuation past that. I got to turn off my air conditioner. I'm freezing over here. Why you guys usually see me? in hoodies one to cover up the fat two i constantly have my air conditioner running because when you have a gaming pc in an uh, enclosed room it just if you turn it off for five minutes you're hot you turn it back on you're cold so i try to find the balance your trade is start what do you mean so I'm already in a BTC long from the current ABC structure. This one right here. Currently waiting on Ethereum to get back about 1421 in order to go long on that. There you go. Gizmos, you're talking like Yoda. 88 short I am. Africa, have a good night, man. Appreciate you being here. What is a limit buy post only option and buy it? Uh, so if you're limiting, uh, let's say you're going long, you have to go long at a price that is lower than the current price. So in order to go long, you need price to go down. So post only just makes it so that you can't accidentally mark it. So if you try to go long at a price that is above on a limit order, uh, then if you don't have post only on, it will immediately put you into a long at the current price point, not what you actually had set. Post only just makes it so that it goes, oh, you did an oopsie. We can't put you in any trades. So there's no cons to having post only on to always have it on
Yep, I'm waiting on an ETH long. If we get back about 1421, that's when I'll be long. Till then, there's nothing for me to do except for sit and wait. Which is unfortunate. I do like being in trades, but sometimes you just have to wait. Because the last short opportunity we had, I didn't take. That was this one right here. It was a, it was a decent sized structure too. And I kind of just turned a blind eye to it because I was not just confident. That's all. It's okay to be confident in your trades, but being uh, ignorant to what the market's actually saying is it's quite a, a stupid thing to do. You see Ford get smoked today? I don't really keep my eye on a lot of stocks. Only the ones that I've been investing in for a long time. Ford. Oh, they got smokes? And it looks like they've been getting smoked. Oh. No. The, uh, anything super on the day. Is this the right chart? Johnny, what's going on? Uh, when closing trade, limit after trade. Uh, don't quite get what you're what you're saying. How do you change the leverage or position side while resistance position size while in a trade? Uh you can just go ahead and switch your leverage. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Cause first off, like ask the question why you're doing that. One, it could be you want to get into a trade at a low leverage and then hype it up later. That way it looks like you made a lot of money because your percentage profit is higher, which doesn't make a lot of sense because you're still making the same exact amount of money. Or two, uh, you've maxed out your entire margin on a singular trade. And now you have another opportunity that you're so eager to get into that you need to increase your margin or uh, increase your leverage to decrease your margin to have it available for the other trade, which at that point, you should probably just kind of re calculate how you're setting up your trades in the first place very I, I in the last couple of years that i've been trading i've never once had to change anything like that during a trade uh limit order on close by option trade is running and limit order in that post only Okay, I think I get what you, yeah. So if you limit close, that is the best option. Uh, obviously limit opening is fine as well. Obviously that's the most beneficial, but it depends on your strategy and what you're going for. A lot of times for me, I like to work with the market and working with the market typically uh, requires me to do market trading. Now, if you're willing to take the chance, you can definitely land limit orders on the crossover moving with the market it is hard sometimes and you will miss trades once in a while but it's all up to you how do you want to play it oh i didn't know they would put a difference here there we go oh yeah they did get smoked today it's quite a dump arena I mean, we've seen worse dumps on uh, on crypto, but that's definitely for a stock. That is definitely quite a bit for the day. But you saw the run that they had here. It makes sense to retrace. Unfortunately, it does look like it's probably going to go lower, but it might just be creating a B wave here and then going for a C. 
What's the like macro macro here? Nah, it looks, it looks all right. Yeah. <sighs> See the problem, like this would just be a massive hedge trade right here. You have the, the long position that you could be holding from down here off of this ABC. I know I'm probably way too zoomed out, but that's how I like to play. Uh, and then at the same time, you would have a short position from here. So, I don't know which one is more likely. Probably the short, to be honest with you. If you are a trader, you don't need to hedge. Don't quite agree with that. My whole idea behind hedging is even if you're a trader, it does make sense. Because let's say I have macro long and now I see a structure that's telling me that price could retrace. So I'm going to take the short in order to make sure that I lock in the profits my long, but still have the availability for my long to continue if I'm wrong about the market going down. And then if we have a short retracement, and then within that short, I see a chance for the market to turn back up and continue the ultimate trend that I had in the first place, I can take profit on that short. If it continues going down, at least I made use of my time and it wasn't all for nothing. Unfortunately, the past couple of weeks, past couple of months, we haven't had those multi-trends where I can really do that. Here's what it is. You have to take what the market gives you. Over here was one of the most perfect examples of that. We had a nice A going into a B. We had an ABC structure telling us that we could see an end to this wave. We took it. We played it into the long. And then I hedged my long around this region. It was at this level right here, but that was the structure I was playing off of. And then I held both. And then at some point I let go of my long because we had the availability to hop back into a long. It's all about playing with the market. It's not one way or the other. BTC will go below 6k that make everyone cry. Well, if they're if they bought the top, maybe. Intro to best loser wins is awesome. The entire book's awesome. Solo crypto. Hola. Please give an example on trailing stop loss and difference between limit close trailing stop loss. So limit close is just saying if price gets to here, I'm going to close my entire order. Now trailing stop loss, I just don't personally think it's a good idea at all.
know Salem BTC encounters that downtrend line since it's all time high. We'll see. I'm not too concerned about trend lines nowadays. They get broken. It's all just a game of chance. If you're a trend line guy, obviously there's that trend line from start of Bitcoin telling us that we're at bottom right now. I don't believe in it, but yeah, you gotta look at all aspects if you're that type of guy. Kai, do you ever put your stop loss at break even? No. Like the reason why I don't put my stop loss at break even is because I'm not risking that much. It's getting like one percent, actually less than that on this account, like 0.9 percent. So if I get stopped out, it shouldn't hurt me. Obviously, getting stopped out a bunch of times it hurts emotionally, but there's gonna be a win somewhere in there, even small ones. on XRP ABC I'm sure most coins have the same structure at the moment right now oh no this one's opposite I see what you mean that definitely is an available short position dare you I'm gonna use that as a hedge that was a good call uno momento I go ahead and move around some assets
That was a good call on XRP. That's that was a perfect, perfect structure that I missed. Supposedly lawsuit settles along similar timeline tomorrow. Gotcha. So we got a little bit of playroom because the resistance is up here. My stop loss is pretty much at the resistance. It's just uh, caught it a little bit late, but we're close enough where I don't mind if I get stopped out once or twice. Better safe than sorry. But like in my most profit log here. No record yet. Okay, well, I like I have so many good trades on XRP that like looking back at it. Some of them were just absolutely monsters. Uh, do you see the thing I posted in Discord or dividing every... I think I did get a glimpse of that. Um, that is kind of crazy. I think it might just be coincidental. But that is cool to see. If you are correct about that, though, then it's, it's definitely a slow down for the next bull run. But that's the thing. Like, right now... Bitcoin's kind of had this steady adoption. If there is kind of like a deciding factor where it does get some heavy adoption, we might see a bull run that performs a lot better. I'm not going to say it's going to be like the old days where we get like 40,000% in a bull run, but it's definitely going to start being uh, a little bit better. Uh, you don't smoke, you don't drink. What's your current addiction? Sugar? Definitely sugar. Uh, that's been my addiction my entire life, I guess. But I got these uh, these little Zen nicotine pouches, which uh, I'm thinking about quitting as well. You think the Fed goes full BP tomorrow? I really don't pay attention to the Fed meetings, to be honest with you. Bureaucracy just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, I'll see the news and the charts when it happens, I guess. But I'm not one of those people that you know, I feel like that's the equivalent of sitting on Elon Musk's Twitter page or in the bull run and then waiting for him to tweet about Doge and then immediately hitting the buy button. I just don't I don't have time for that. Well, I guess I got the time for it, but I just don't care enough to do so. Are you short, brethren? Um, I'm currently short on XRP just because it looks like a nice setup. And uh, I would like to have a short position to be in just in case. But uh, primarily based on like the market structure across the board, US 100, buy, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, I am looking to be in a long or shortly, if the market continues going up, hop into a long. Right now, BTC is still sitting uh, above its current long setup. So. Bro, after trading, uh, after so long trading ABCs, 
why are you not scaling your margin account size to make bigger profits? Well, uh, during the bull run, we did just that and we made stupid money. We made the 100 to $100,000 account and then I cashed that out and then we started again because my whole thing is like, I don't want to just be sitting here with hundreds of thousands of dollars on my screen. One, because I just don't like the look of that. Two, I like to let people see what real trading is like starting from zero to hero. So this account, we started with a grand and we got it up to seven. I've taken a thousand dollars worth of profit out of it just to help someone out. And uh, currently sitting at about two grand if you round up a little bit. So I will, I scale as the account grows. It's just right now, haven't been hitting the trades. But when the time comes, the time will come. Right now, because the account is dwindling slowly because we're getting stopped out a lot, I have to scale down, not scale up. That's just being angry and trying to make my money back faster, which I'm just not into. I just watch dates and mark calendars. I know which days will have potential for increased volatility. I guess, yeah, that's a good point. Any thought on Michelle, on Michelle blurry point of view? Blurry point of view. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, bro, can you show a scalp? I'm not much of a scalper, man. I mean, I just entered a, a short trade, but if the short trade is gonna, is gonna be taking profit on, it has to get at, down to at least you know, somewhere around the 34 cent mark, or at least show me that it wants to turn around. You ever try to start at risking 1% of a portfolio? What? No, I would never go increased. That makes no sense to me, uh, in my opinion. What you're talking about there is you're talking about like, uh, a poor man's roulette gambling strategy applied to trading, which is even more volatile than a roulette table. I just don't see how that would work. Now, um, with the 100 to $100,000 account, I did just that, but I did it backwards and I didn't flip flop back and forth. So the first trade that I did was balls to the wall, 100% risk. And I landed it, all right? I started with an amount that I knew that I could replenish, first of all. All right, it wasn't like I was taking my life savings and then going 100% on it. All right, definitely not that. So if I needed to start the account, I could. So the next trade, because I got like a four to four to one restored ratio, I now had $400 instead of uh, $100. So now I could use 20% risk and still make the same amount of money per R and R for the next trade, but I wasn't determining what my take profit was going to be. I let the market show me, so I just let it go. And the next time that I got to a major milestone, say two thousand dollars, I would reduce and reduce and reduce. Now, if you've been reading the best loser wins, you're probably going, "Well, that's not what Trader Tom says to do. He says go deeper." All right, Trader Tom's not dumb. All right. When you start out with that much risk, what Trader Tom's talking about is not 100% risk, guys. He's saying like, okay, if you are if you have 1% in the trade, maybe you add 0.25% on the next scale or based off of what strategy he's doing. But he's not using 50% of his account at risk on a single trade. That was working with the bull market. We have a throwaway account and we're trying to see what the most amount we can get out of it is. Uh, I mean, if you want a long XRP from here, go ahead, man. Be my guest. I mean, I see on a smaller time frame, if it does come down a little bit more, you have a smaller time frame ABC structure, but I just, you, I would say you're not really looking at the macro 
and noticing that we're hitting overhead resistance here, the market tried to push higher and we're back to where we started. So it's just not a good sign. I mean, hey, play it how you want it. I Me mean, personally, I got my long on BTC. So if I'm wrong about XRP coming down, I have the long takeover. I lose a little bit of money on the stop on that. If I'm wrong about BTC, XRP comes down. I have a lot of money to be made. I forgot what the 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 name of that strat. Well, I don't know if it. I know in, in my roulette playing days, I definitely saw something like that strategy, the 1%, if you win, go to 2%. Uh, I think it was like Fibonacci, where, but it was backwards. So like, if you lost one time, you just bet one to one ratio. And then if you lose again, you bet two, and you bet three, and then five, and then eight. But you're just playing against the house. So you're going to lose eventually. Now, it's definitely like statistically, it's a good strategy for a short period of time. But there is always that chance that the first time that you try it, you go bust. Yeah, it's Fibonacci Martingale. Okay, using the 1% stop loss. Yep, using 1%. So if I get stopped out of this, I'll probably just go directly back into another short because at that point we're still gonna be below, but we're gonna be closer to the resistance. And then from there, I'll just play it like normal. Sleeping now, we'll see you tomorrow, Kite. Have a good night, buddy. I know it's late where you're at. Martingale strategy is the real reason why casinos have max bets on tables. Yeah. They want they want to have that. And like whenever I play like roulette, I'm not really there to make money. I'm there to have fun. So like I yeah, I do like to win. So I'll do the Martingale strategy, but I'll like I'll have a max bet for myself and I'll try to use the smallest amount possible. That way I have as many chances to double, you know, in order to play Martingale. Okay, last week I lost all my savings, $650 on Ape. Come on, man. That money I earned from ETH long, please help me with the psychology trading. You're helping yourself, first and foremost. I think as long as you honestly, like, reflect on the decisions you made leading up to that, and you just sit in the hurt and you see how much your monkey brain can get you into that big of a problem. Ironically, ApeCoin. Monkey brain led you to ApeCoin and you lost it. There's no simple thing I can sit here and say to you. I've been on the same journey myself. There's hundreds of streams. Little tidbits here and there. There's nothing quick I can come up with that's just going to fix it for you. I'm sorry that happened, but maybe it needed to. Because it takes like real losses like that where like you realize there's nobody to blame. You can't blame the market because the market just do what it do. There's only one thing that you can really focus on in trading. And that is how much are you risking? Is it appropriate? If so... Set it up, let it roll. There's gonna be a trade some that, somewhere and it's gonna work out for someone somewhere. You're not always gonna be on the right side. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. Don't get lost in the sauce. It starts moving against you. When's your end point? Where do you say enough is enough? Or you're just gonna let it keep going until you're out of money. Going long on, on White Claw. Yeah, dude. Bear market of 2018 taught me a lot. 
see a lot of really good traders struggling right now though just sympathizing with kite yeah and that's like the, that's the test man a lot of people are losing their marbles right now getting stopped out and they're just going to do something reckless because they they want that euphoric feeling of the all-time high of the bull market you know landing trade after trade after trade all you have to do is it long you're making money left and right and then we get down to the trenches here and people just start getting knocked out because they get stopped out over and over again and all of a sudden they're increasing their risk scaling into because they're losing and they're mad and they want their money back i could sit here and bet my max money right now and then try to make the or the five grand back I've been constantly dwindled down. But I know it's just a matter of time and patience. Using smart risk, just little placements here and there. Pretty much just have to land like one trade. And then the market going up, plus the profits from the longs. It'll put me back where I need to be. Now, I mean, if we go down, we go down. I just needed a good setup to allow me to work with the downside which so happens to be XRP, I guess. Uh, if it was a shit coin, I probably wouldn't uh, touch it. But XRP, yeah, I'm not saying it's not a shit coin, but it's it's been around long enough. And there's nothing wrong with playing high leverage as long as you're doing it with money that you can lose. Plain and simple. Don't let someone say that like, oh, you have to play with low leverage. No, you just have to play with a risk that is makes sense. Barry, hi Kite. Did you did your portfolio grow a lot these weeks? Uh not really been stagnant we went down on a small decline this hasn't been really any good trades lately and the the couple trades that were good unfortunately just i just haven't been like really up and at them lately but i'm trying to change that around and uh like i said new schedule monday through friday i'm gonna be here 4 p.m for at least two hours or shooting for two hours at least and if that gets to be too much i might reduce it but uh i'm just trying to be around for most of the days of the week. stopped out and reopen this 760 That looks a lot better. What's your J? What's going on? Have you done any challenge accounts with your strategy? Uh, this is currently one. We started with a thousand about like five, six months ago during the downtrend. And uh, we got it up to 7K. I transferred over into inverse perpetual and then the market took another 50% dump. So we were at about 3,500. I withdrew a thousand. So all in all, like total loss, I'm down about 600 bucks. So if we get back to where we were, we'll be sitting somewhere around there.
What happened to that Ice Coast Rob guy, Shillin' Floki? Is he still around? I haven't seen him much. And, uh... I, you know... God, this... Are you kidding me, dude? Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna have to close the blinds. Alright, that's better. I'm more in my environment now. Yeah, I... I try to not, uh, you know, shit on anyone's parade. Because like, I like... I rather people learn that because it... When, when someone's like in a high like that, where like they think like this thing's going to change their entire life, and they like dump all their money into it it's hard for me to like reason with them so if they win i'm of course i don't want anyone to lose it's like i hope that it happens and this thing takes off and it changes your life but like you can you can just smell bullshit from a mile away i think you need to have some hurt before like you become cynical and like you like with the crypto market you have to be cynical 24 7. it's why i don't really i don't really care when people talk about this coin and that coin i like if they are worthwhile they'll be around for a long enough time and it will come across my radar i'm just not interested in everything and in anything so i just stick with what i know and if something is a good idea, it's going to be making money for a long time. I don't need to be in the coin when it's first announced. It's like, you know, like people like, well, you can only make real money if you play these small cap coins. No, you don't. No, you there's so many YouTubers that promote small cap coins because they think it's the only way to get rich. They go, oh, you know, Ethereum and Bitcoin, like, you know, only the rich get richer off of that. No, they don't. And we proved it. We, uh, The percentage gain of $100,000 to $100,000 with a simple breakout strategy is insane. And that was off of the biggest coin, which probably put in the least amount of overall percentage if you were to just buy and hold it. If you do things smart, you don't have to be dumb and go buy a digital lottery ticket. That's that's my opinion, obviously. And there's always gonna be that guy, well, like, I got rich off a of doge. I am happy that you got out at the right time. Not a lot of people did. Just, there's always gonna be a person. Are you the one that developed the spider lines? No. So I learned about something called gone fans and I really liked them and I kind of figured out my own way to do them. And I was promoting them and promoting them and promoting them. And all of a sudden, uh, crypto face comes out and he goes, I took this from another trader, but I think I've done better with it. And then he renamed it spider lines. So I took gone fans still called them gone fans told people who makes gone fans so you see the difference in how other people do things just like how he took other people's indicators and then calls it another name i mean come on dude it's just like the abc method it's it's just called the abc method I didn't make it up. I just like to make it casual for people to learn. I never claimed it was my method. Okay, what's your biggest loss? $200,000. And one night. It was just a couple months after I started trading. Um... I bought Market Cipher. I felt like I was the 
greatest trader alive and I had something that no one else did and I was the best and I was going to make it big and I was going to be big billionaire boy. And I learned about DCAing. And I would just was losing a trade and I went, no, just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more until I just, I just didn't give it anymore. And then I got liquidated. So yeah, I, uh, it's like when, when other people talk about why don't you do this and I get angry about it. It's because I've been angry at myself for doing it. And I know it doesn't work. So that's why like, I have so many opinions that I do. Crypto face also came up with a cool calculator. Dude, like, and I, I like, a part of me doesn't regret it. Like I said, I, I, I had a full like hour and a half discord call with flopping groper and because he called me about my calculator and he was like man this is like really cool he was like so how does it work you know like how like, you know because i i think everybody should be given a chance to to learn how to be better and i wanted to give him that and the only thing that sucks is that he just took it and ran with it and it's not like the most innovative thing ever i'm sure there's other calculators out there but like to because that came from my brain and i didn't take that from anybody i i made the formula on paper because i thought about what mattered most at the time it was messing me up and i put like a little formula together where like i could calculate exactly how many contracts that i should be using and then someone turned into a calculator that was in my group to have them take that and then just like it, it's so it's so annoying but i'm glad it gives more people the opportunity that probably would have never seen it uh why did I use a stop loss at the time? Because I was a dumbass. And I don't have the same trading habits that I do today. Plain and simple. Okay, what is your view on footprint charts and order heat maps? Um, I do think they they, they can be useful. And I'm not denying that they can't. It's just for me personally, I just don't like to cloud my judgment. I, I I actually just like to keep things casual because when I first started trading, that's when everything was the most complicated and I had a thousand different indicators on my screen and I was trying to read book map. That's when I lost the most. When I started keeping it more simple, I'm not saying that I win more, but I'm more confident to let my trades run and that's why I win more money. I don't win more, but I win more money at the end of the day. So you won't be renaming any kind of ABC wave structure to the kite string method? No. <laughs> no. Because you know what I care about? Integrity. I don't want someone five years from now coming back and being like, hey, uh, you sold a whole bunch of people this method, but you didn't come up with it. I want to be able to sit here and be like, no shit. I didn't even rename it. I, 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 that's the whole thing. I would like to show people how easy it can be because it's helped me. Uh, did you take a break? Uh, you took a break after that or you got depressed? I don't remember if I took a break or not. I think because at the time uh, I had a different uh, infatuation with trading. We weren't even like in a bull market. We were going sideways and down. It was just because my brain is ADHD. 
when I find something that I get interested in, I am jacked up. I'll learn 24 seven about it. So although that was like awful, I think I just went straight back to it. Now, did I make that same mistake again though? No, that's the difference. I learned from that mistake and I kept going. Nowadays, I don't think I have the same like infatuation with trading. I'm not as eager to go learn the next hot new method on how to increase my win ratio to 99.9%. I'm casual now. I know what I like and I'm willing to take hits when it matters. I hate this glitch so much. So if you have your market order set to order by uh, cost, and then you try to go to conditional, it won't show you what the actual price of what you're about to do is. You have to refresh the page after changing it back to quantity. Oh, it's still not showing me. That's kind of jacked up. Uh, I guess it's showing me down here. That's fine. Why 10x? I could put anything that I want, but that's just how I have my calculator set up. So I'm using 8% of my account as margin, and then I'm using 10% of that 8% as risk. So I'm risking $13.73. Even before I enter anything into that little calculator over there to put my trade in, I know exactly how much I want to lose. And I'm risking 0.8% of my account. I could set this calculator up differently. I could do 4% and then increase this to 20. I'm still risking $13 and I'm still risking 0.8% of my account, but now I'm using 20X leverage. The only thing that's different is how much am I risking out of my lessened margin size. So I'm using a real stop loss of 1%, but in Bybit, I'm using a stop loss of 10% or 20% if I was using this setup right here. I watched some of your old videos and could not make sense of all the lines. Dude, right there with you. Had the funding rate, had the funding rate been? Yeah, the funding rate right now is negative. There's more people definitely shorting, but it's not extreme enough for me to like really be afraid of it. It's when it's like negative two. That's when like, okay, there is a pocket of shorts somewhere that if it's liquidated, it's going to go boop. That's what happened on, um, I forgot what coin it was, but we made a lot of money. Just going in long on that. It was G something, I think. It had a negative three. And it shot up like a rocket. I thought you were a market type trader. Yeah, I was. Ain't anymore. Nice daily stream, two for two. Yeah, 
baby steps. Just have to make it one more day. You know, the whole trick in the devil method. Is it weird that Elliott wave levels coincide with support and resistance levels that coincide with order box? Yeah, because I mean, it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy. If there's a lot of people that are using Fibonacci's, which there is, then a lot of people are going to be expecting those numbers to get hit. Um, they'll prematurely put in orders saying that it's going to bottom here. I'm not too concerned about where it's going to bottom. Uh, of course, when, I, when I'm playing kind of like that, take profit method if it hits here um it's just because i'm trying to do like a scalping almost like you know just locking in profits but i'm starting to adapt more to let the market take me where it takes me and not try to control an uncontrollable beast so I'm working on a browser extension that brings your calculator, your calculator right into buy, but fetches your, that would be really freaking awesome, dude. Hopefully. Like sounds fantastic. Also sounds like a security risk in some sort of sense, but I trust you. Uh, because that sounds Amazing. All right, what do you think about BTC? You think the bottom is in or we'll see 10K or what? Um, I don't think we're just going to dump immediately down to 10K if we continue to go down. Uh, it's all a matter of progression to me. So I look at the market in terms of real levels all right so we're looking at the the uptrend here all right where did the market retest the downside and find support so obviously if we go back in time a little bit obviously this was our largest downtrend before obviously this because this is not completed and then we went up down up down up down so the next level that we would retest is 16,200. All right, we could probably go below it a little bit and then come back above it because obviously markets aren't exact. But if that level fails, you know, treat it like a zone almost, then we might see 10K. But until then, no. In terms of the current structure, right now we do have an ABC bottom and we're currently above the local low of the A. So to me, as long as that maintains, I'm fairly confident in the upside. If we break that, so be it. We'll see what happens. That's why I'm currently taking a short on XRP if it comes back down below this resistance of this macro A. So that if it does dump, at least I have some sort of other option. And then Ethereum has yet to get back above its abc long position just waiting on that i think it's 1408 1421 streaming or trading that's the question with the crypto market we can make fifty thousand dollars with just 100 dollars with the 10x if we catch the right coins we just talked about that yeah you can um you know not really like during a sideways bear market maybe if you're like jesus you probably could do that uh but at the right time you can but the whole if you catch the right coins you don't really have to do that you can trade bitcoin and still make that kind of money you don't have to okay don't spam
Glad you like the idea. Unfortunately, Bybit uh, secures some input fields, so you can't sync every field back. Uh, but I'd also put it open source, so there's no security issue at all. Fair enough. Appreciate it. That was a great idea, man. I won 52 trades in a row, then I got liquidated. How did that start, man? It's quite a quite a run, just to get liquidated once. Uh, what about the smaller ABC on BTC? Why didn't you take that? Uh, which which one? Are you talking about this? Because, I mean, if I have a larger structure that's higher probability, why would I choose to go in at a higher price point on a smaller structure? Unless that's not the one that you were talking about. Is there something even smaller? You're talking about this? That's, that's too small of a structure for me to bet the farm on, in my opinion. Too small. Comparative size, it's just a drop in the bucket compared to this. Alf, thanks for the stream. Gotta go. Appreciate you being here, man. I'll check you next time, okay? Uh, if you started from nothing all over again with a thousand dollars, would you buy long-term holds or trade your way back to glory? I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing right now, just with different risk. So I'll be taking these same longs, holding them for the upside potential. If I have short positions I can get myself in to hedge the market, I'll do that as well. But with good risk, 1% or less. No reason to rush things right now. The best thing you can do is maintain your account value, let the market move up in general, and then hopefully you have trades that coincide with it. Ryan said in his new trading video, keep adding to losing position close to liquidation. I, I don't agree with that at all. Love Ryan, but no, no. Because you're just adding more gas to a fire that's already burning pretty hot. You're already losing money. Like that is just an attempt to salvage a losing trade. Everybody loves indicators because they give you like a sense of security and they give you a sense of like confidence that like there's some rhyme or reason to what's happening. There's not. Humans are unpredictable. Now, the, the one like thankful thing that I love about crypto is that there is hardcore supply and demand mechanics embedded into software all right that's why i love crypto so yes at the end of the day we should kind of know what the overarching thing is going to be of crypto but we don't know what the daily ins and outs are going to be how the market's going to react to other types of news we don't because crypto like long term is stable but short term it's just as viable as every other stock and asset to being fucked with by stinky old monkeys. That's that's really all we're doing here. So play it smart, but don't overthink it because it's not not worth your time to overthink.
Do I trade full time? Yeah. Oh, I, yes, I do use a second account for the stream. I've been doing that for years. Me personally, I don't feel safe showing my real accounts. And the whole purpose of my channel was always trying to be realistic. And I, my favorite, so it's something with my brain. My favorite part of video games is the start. It's like Minecraft. You load into the world, you have nothing. And then you build your way. And now you're like this massive oil tycoon. I'm talking about like mod in Minecraft. And you have everything at your disposal and nothing is hard anymore. I love the grind. Rust. You start on the beach with a, with a rock. By the end, you have AKs and a full base that nobody can get into and nobody can touch you. It becomes boring. I like the start of things. That's why I've started these challenge portfolios over and over and over again. This one I intend to keep from the last time that we started it to the top of the next bull market. And I'll probably restart again. I just love the grind. I can be, I can be like every other YouTuber that just shows $100,000 trades. But that's boring. It's boring to me. I'm not trying to attract people to sell them a product. I'm trying to attract people to have people to hang out and trade with. So, if it's boring to me, I don't want to be on here 24-7 doing it. Digital, what's going on, man? Exactly, NPC. Exactly. <laughs> Rust, you tell your sister to bamboozle for your view. <laughs> then you steal this. <laughs> Listen, I didn't I didn't know it was you. I just thought it was a random person on the server. Oh I felt bad after I knew it was you because I was like, oh, oh, I tried to forget about that. That's that's one of the skeletons in my closet. But hey, dude, it's it's rust. It's rust, man. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> oh, my God. Kai, any patterns you see in relation to stocks and crypto? I'm in Asia, and the Asian markets usually follow the close, the close in the American markets, which usually knocks down the price of crypto too. If there is, I don't really pay attention to be on it, uh, to be honest. I'm pretty much purely crypto. And the stocks that I do have, I've been holding them for so long that unless like we went into a Great Depression, I would not be back at the prices that I bought them. No, I let them do what they're going to do because AMD and NVIDIA, the two most important ones that I own, PC gaming markets growing, computers always going to keep growing. So I feel like that's a good asset to hold. I feel like cars like Ford, for example, you saw how like we're kind of just been going sideways for many years. It has its ups and ups and, down, uh, ups and downs, but um. There's not like a whole lot more that you can do and I don't know. I don't feel like it's a super great asset to hold.
Uh, thank you for recommending Tom's book. Explains my problems trading to a T. Uh, do you follow his trades? I don't personally follow his trades. I feel like that would be kind of scummy of me. I feel like that would not look good integrity wise if I was just passing his trades along as mine. Now, I have my own trading style, but I, I definitely love him. And like I, I developed my trading methods and my ideologies before I found him but he matched up pretty closely and he also added some things to my repertoire. So that's why I really recommend him. He's a great dude. Need a good new PC for gaming. Well, the 4,000 series of graphics cards are coming out pretty soon. So you might want to just hold on a little bit. Unfortunately, I think the power consumption on those cards are quite, quite ridiculous, but we'll see when they come out. Just made it home from work in time to catch uh, whatever is left of this live stream. We got about 10 minutes left, but I appreciate you being here. As always. What's good, Kite? Nothing much. Uh, we're just seeing if this uh, XRP setup will hold long enough for me to not mess with it anymore. Uh, and we got a current long on BTC, playing both sides of the market, seeing what's going to transpire on the macro view of things. Any truth to the U.S. bans crypto farming? I have no clue. I doubt it. Like I said, it's just not in any country's incentive to... I mean, they could probably ban it for like show you know be like oh we're so environmentally friendly when crypto mining is not even that bad for the environment do you know how much power is pumped out by power companies that doesn't even get used it's power that's going nowhere so why is this thing being hooked up to the power grid as now using some of that free power that's not being used by anybody that's being literally wasted bad now and it's also bringing income from the world. So, I mean, there's no, there's no disincentive. If the power plants are going to run anyways, especially if they're on renewable, what's the, it's not hurting anybody. There's, it's, I'm a broken record with this. People are just dumb. It's all for wokeness. At the end of the day, they're not being critical of what's actually happening. So, yeah, I, um, uh, there's nothing that I play right now that I can't run at a good frame rate. And if I can't run it at a gun frame rate, I just tone down my 4K to like 1440p and I'm fine. So I'll probably be keeping the 3090 for quite a while unless like games just get absolutely ridiculous, which might be happening with the Unreal 5. Uh, I, I don't think I've played a game that's on Unreal 5 yet, but there's a couple that are on my radar that are coming out that are pretty awesome. And we'll see how those perform. But supposedly they perform fantastic because of some of the optimizations that Unreal Engine 5 has. Basically, like, it only, like, renders exactly what you're looking at and everything else goes, like, almost 2D. But it can do it seamlessly as you look around. Kind of awesome. ETH just made a lower low. No, it didn't. What are you talking about? I guess on a super small time frame, yeah. But a lower low to me would mean this right here. Because when I'm talking about lower lows or higher highs, I'm talking about off of trend. But this is within trend. So this is uptrend. This is downtrend. So if we put in a new low here, then I'll become continuation of trend.
Just an opinion, but I'd take 1080p, 1440, or 100 FPS rather than 4K 60. I mean, it's getting to the point now with the hardware that you don't even have to make that that uh, that choice. I mean, I got a 4K 144 hertz, and I think Tarkov is probably my, my most uh, intensive game. Not that it like is the most amazing looking game on my repertoire, uh, but it's definitely not optimized. And at 4K, I can get like 100 to 150 FPS depending on which map I'm on. Now that's with a 5800X 3D and a 3090. So it's a $4,000 PC, but you know. Pretty much every game can run, uh, run 4K now. And that started that started happening in the in the 2000 series. Uh, you can maybe get 4K 60 with the with the the 1000 series of graphics cards, but it definitely wasn't there yet. But I'm kind of uh I'm kind of upset. Well, like not really because I I had a 5800X uh, on my motherboard uh, for the processor and they came out with the 5800X 3D, which doesn't sound like that big of a difference, but it is. So the L3 cache went from 30 megabytes to 100 megabytes, which for certain types of games, it makes a massive difference. So. Anything that's like an MMO that has a gigantic map with a lot going on, Planside 2, Star Citizen, Tarkov, uh, World of Warcraft, anything with a lot going on, uh, it made a massive increase in FPS across the board on all those video games. Um, I've never seen a processor really do that unless you're really upgrading from a shitty processor to a decent one. To see the difference just from the singular change was insane in tarkov i went from like 70 fps to 110 fps so if you if you're not intending on upgrading to the new 7000 ryzen and you still have an am4 motherboard uh you can always throw one of those 5800x 3ds in there as long as you update your bios and uh i think that i think this uh processor in GP are gonna last me quite a while. Once again, like I, I'm kind of trying to find the balance in my life of buying what I need and then using those things as long as they're viable. I mean, when I was like, since I've been growing up, I've been upgrading PC after PC after PC, uh, pretty much almost every single generation because that like kid mentality of like, I want to say that I have the best stuff. Uh, when really it's working fine for me. So this is gonna be my PC where like I practice what I preach and uh, keep it for quite a while until like it, I absolutely need to upgrade. By the way, you look good since last time I saw you. Appreciate it. I uh, wouldn't say like I'm putting in a lot of effort, but I appreciate the compliment nonetheless. Oh yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't debating the cost of 4K 60 FPS versus 2K 144 hertz. Yeah, definitely the cost is uh, there, but you know, it depends on like how you know what what kind of gamer you are. If you're if you're a competitive gamer, you probably don't need a 4K. If uh, I I, I just found like uh, as I grew older, I liked the more scenic single player experiences or like slower multiplayer games. I liked the extra resolution. Rock an X370 R7 1700. 1070 yeah my um the first pc that like i really built uh like like the first like 
crazy PC that I built was the size of an Xbox, and it had a 1070 with an i7 6700K, and uh, I loved that thing to death, and probably should have, uh, oh, no. I liked it because I, I was moving around a lot. I was going to my dad's house. Um, my school had like a day where we could all bring in our consoles and play. So I bring in my PC. And, uh, but as that stopped, obviously a desktop PC makes more sense. Better temperatures, more power, all that good stuff. I'm waiting for that one game that awakens the gamer in me again. Yeah, like I said, for me, it was the PS5 games. But like in terms of PC gaming, Tarkov. I bought Tarkov when it first came out and it was garbage. And I like had some friends that were playing it and I was really reluctant and I tried it and I was like, man, this is so hard to get into. There's so much going on. But like as I started like learning here and there, like, I was like, this is awesome. And I definitely burnt myself out on it a little bit too much until another wipe. Cause like I said, my favorite part is the progression when everybody has nothing and you build up like right now on Tarkov, I got like 50 million rubles and a whole bunch of gear. There's no, there's no, no reason for me to play anymore. Obviously like the PVP in fun is, is fun too, but it's the risk that, that makes me have a lot more fun. So, all right guys, it's 6 PM. I appreciate you guys being here. We talked about the setups that I'm interested in. And what we're waiting on and what we're currently in. I'll be back tomorrow around the same exact time, 4 p.m. EST. And uh, we'll try to keep it rolling. One more day. That's our, that's my new motto. One more day. It's like an AA meeting, but for streaming. You know? You guys, you saw the leaks for GTA 6, right, though? People were saying it looks like trash, but I, for what, for, for the leaks, it was pretty good. Cause that's like developer footage. They have a lot of settings turned off. They're just got bare bones, but it looked pretty cool. And I like, uh, like, uh, what the, what the story is supposedly going to be, but all right, guys, I'll see you later. I appreciate you being here as always. And I uh, will be back uh, tomorrow. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and do the thing. Hit you with the outro. Bye!